Hey guys, today I'm very excited to start something new with you all. Uh, you can probably already tell by the title of the video of what exactly it's going to be and you can probably tell by the thumbnail uh, what is in this box, but I figured it would be more fun to unbox it in front of you and to give you an initial reaction uh, live and, and as I see it. So yeah, as you can see by the title, I am starting a Wehrmacht or Wehrmacht or however however you say it uh, World War II train. Now a little disclaimer here: I in no way, shape, or form am a Nazi or support what the Nazis did. However, the Germans back then and even nowadays were amazing engineers, and they came up with amazing. Uh, inventions and designs for vehicles and I think it's just a very cool thing to be able to model in this time of day so like I said in no way shape or form am I a Nazi or do I agree with any of their ideas or anything that they really stand for at all um, but with that being said uh, we're gonna be able to model a World War II German train here and I think it's going to be a pretty cool adventure. We're going to do this in a series of parts. Uh, today, obviously, starting with the locomotive. And I already have ordered a four-piece set of German rail cars. And I'm going to do a, se a separate video for each one of those, but they should arrive at some point next week. So I would assume by... Uh, today is Saturday. I would assume by next Saturday... We'll, I'll be able to get out another video of one of those rail cars. Um, but without further ado, let's start here. I'm going to bring out my handy dandy Kershaw knife here. And um, we're going to start unboxing. All right. Cut through the first layer here. Uh, here's my shipping information. So I purchased this <clears throat> from Reynolds Euro Imports uh, .com online. So if you want to check them out, I can put a link to their website down below. I got to get these peanuts out of the way as I pull the locomotive out. I've actually never seen a Roco box before. That's what this is: is a, a Roco engine. Here it is, you can't, obviously you can't see it right now, but that makes a surprise all that much better. There is nothing else in the box here from Roco, or I mean, sorry, from uh, Reno Zero Imports, so we'll move that to the side. As you can see here, I have a, well it just says DR, but I, I, it's a BR50. And it's an HO scale and it has sound and DCC. That's about all for the box, really. Pretty simple. I do like these boxes that just come off from the top, though. They're very, very easy to work with and uh, just take off instead of all this uh, unpackaging type deals you have to do with a lot of them. Well, this is neat. You can see from the manual here, it's in German. Um, looks like right there is English. That's what I'm going to have to use. But this is the uh, instructions that come with it. We may dive into that later if we have to. Alright, now we're going to bring up the locomotive itself. As you can see how it's packaged in here. Uh, we have plastic uh, paper-like stuff over the top and then even more plastic on top of that. We also have, up in the top here, we have little detail parts uh, that you can put on. There are the, I see couplers in there, um, just other little parts that I don't really know what they are, but maybe we'll find out. Then on this side... We have, it looks to be number boards. So, 
some number boards there, and that looks like it's it. All right, let's pull out the engine itself here. Pull it out all in one piece of plastic here. So this is how it will come from Roco if you do buy a Roco locomotive. Ah, interesting, okay. So, first off, when I opened it up, I have, it's supposed to have a uh, smoke deflector on the side here, but instead it's right here. So I'm either gonna have to glue that on or it snaps back on somehow, but that is not very good to start out with. But we'll find out what happens here. Plastic comes off the top. And another piece fell off. Looks like it took a little bit of a beating in the shipping here. This looks like it goes on the headlight, which it does, so I'm gonna put that off to the side for now. Take a little bit more out. And there's the engine itself. Now I'm gonna cut it here and I'm going to see if I can make those minor repairs that need to be made. All right, I'm back guys. Um, I got everything back on the way, the way it needed to be. The one thing is this far smoke deflector over here um, will have to be glued, but it's really gonna be, it's gonna be an easy glue. I have it just stuck on there right now. But it's going to be really easy to glue, and I'm, I'm not too worried about it. Um, the other thing that came off was the part that surrounds the headlight, or I guess uh, it would be a headlamp, probably in Germany. Um, but I think it was made to come off because it just slid back on really easily, and I think it might have just uh, came off during shipping. Another thing is behind all this foam here. Uh, was another set of instructions which I'll pull out and these look like they will be more focused towards the decoder uh, and other things like that so I don't know exact oh this looks like uh, okay this has piece um, parts for what I got in those little things so you can see number one here is an oil can and that is actually uh, one of these something in here I saw earlier looked like an oil can so apparently they gave me little details like that like very very little details that I could throw in there uh, here you've got all sorts of little details in this little manual that I don't even know if I'm going to mess with because I have to move around so much and have to take my my locomotives and other trains around quite a bit so I don't know if I'm going to even mess with those little details but maybe someday we'll see all right I'm looking through a little bit more of the paperwork here this is what I'm looking for cool all right I have found the functions for the decoder, uh, F0 through F17. Again, it's pretty cool. It's in German and English, and I don't know, it looks like French at the end, uh, which is cool. I think it's cool at least. So F0, light on, off. F1, sound on, sound off, which is different from uh, American locomotives that you usually get because usually American locomotives have F1 being bell but obviously European locomotives don't use a bell so that's sound on sound off F2 is whistle short F3 is whistle long F4 is coupling noise F5 is conductor whistle F6 shunting range F7 scoop of coal F8 air pump F9 water pump F10, station announcement. F11, sanding. F12, whistle. Another whistle, okay. Uh, F13, drain. F14, mute. F15, pressure release. F16, injector. And F17, bell. Okay, so there's a bell. Huh. 
And I'm sure some of you guys down in the comments will be able to tell me more about this than I already know. I don't know if any Germans will watch this, but I have noticed that there really aren't very many uh, videos of German locomotives uh, in HO online, any really any uh, detailed ones at that. So I'm hoping that if anybody is out there looking to at least start with a German steam locomotive, that this will be a, a good way to um, see how this fits for you and, and how you like it. So like I said before, it's a Rocco BR50 and uh, let's move in for a little bit closer look here. All right, here we are at the front of the locomotive and um, the three things that had come off during shipping was this top headlight lamp, this left headlight lamp, and then this smoke deflector. And right now that smoke deflector is not on there well. If I moved it around at all, it would fall off, but it is sitting exactly where it's supposed to be. I just have to quick glue it, which like I said before, will be easy because it's all just um, metal on metal there and it'll, it'll all come together. Speaking of that, I haven't really felt the locomotive enough so the locomotive itself seems to be plastic for the most part and I believe the tender is metal. So locomotive itself plastic, tender is metal. If you look on the front here we have a little uh, number board, oh there you go, like I said, uh, push it at all and it's going to fall off but um, I just push it back and I'll glue it later and make sure that it's good to go. Um, but there is a little number board on the front here, right there. It says 501002TAC-D, or Delta. Um, I don't know what that means, but it looks cool, so I don't have any problems with it. <laughs> Up here on the front, there's no actual real coupler to use. There's just this small little uh, coupler for show, but I think it looks really good. You've got air hoses here, if, if that's what they are, and then the buffers. Um, look up on top, you have the smokestack here, and then other valves and tubes, and I'm not going to get all technical into it because I wish I knew more about it, but I just don't. I am starting this adventure with you guys. This is the first time I've ever really seen a German locomotive. Um, but I'm very excited about it, that is for sure, and I hope you guys are too, are also to, to uh, continue this journey with me. Let's move around to the side of the locomotive here. Here's a quick look from the side. As you can see, very, very nice detail. I like how even they have these little yellow squares uh, painted in there. I don't know what they are, but they look cool and look like a little neat detail that they really didn't have to Put in but they did and it, it really makes it a little really look really nice even these little uh, warning signs up there I would need I'm assuming they're in German and I would need a magnifying glass to even be able to see that but uh, they look like they're printed clearly and actually do say stuff so that is really nice you can see all these little details up in here all the pipes and tubes going up to the separate boi uh, boiler spots and and uh, this all this other railings and other stuff like that that make it look very detailed and very good I can move that over a little bit just pointing at these before now you can see the drive wheels here there are five drive wheels one thing that I really like about this is if you'll notice the drive shaft here is red in the middle and then has silver on the outside and then the actual uh, part right here is also silver so there's there's different colors to it which makes it look more real and makes it look less plasticky and less less like a model which I think looks really really good if we move back a little bit here's the cab and the tender uh, looks like they have little vents here for smoke to come out um, once they open up or heat to escape once they open up the firebox uh, again it's the same number that was on the front of the engine this uh it's it's the german railroad i'll put it uh i'll put it right here what it says um because i'll look into it a little bit closer but it's the german railroad of the time uh and then just a little bit more specs from the tender here and here's a little step ladder there that is very neat uh little so i'm going to have to make sure that 
nothing happens to that. All right, let's move back to the rear of the tender. Now here's the rear of the tender, again, same number. Uh, and then some warning signs again, I can't read them, they are in German. Um, but then we have what looks to be another real looking coupler here, uh, buffers, and then the actual usable coupler, which I have no idea how these work. Um, I'm sure it's pretty simple, but by next Saturday, we're gonna find out together if you don't already know because we're gonna have more um, stuff coming in for our German train here um, but yeah that's pretty much it for the locomotive uh, very neat detail looks amazing and I can't wait to see it in action here like right now I've got my controller here and I'm gonna hope that this decoder is the exact same as a normal American decoder and it has a factory set of 03. We're gonna find out in a second here. It does, okay. The sound didn't come on right away, but I'm gonna grab that sheet that had the sound functions on it. All right, I have the sheet that has the sound functions. Now, we're gonna see about turning on this light first. Oh, it already is on, okay. So, you can see me turning them on and off right now. I'm gonna see if I can get you a better view here of the headlights because they are sort of dim from the side, but you can see that they're there. Let's see here. All right, I'm holding on to the camera now, so if it's a little shaky, I apologize. But I'm just showing you real quick. Oh, I'm just showing you real quick the headlights. So this is them on, this is them off. As you can see, the top headlamp and the bottom two all light up, which I think is very neat. Looks really, really good. All right, now we're back on the tripod. We're gonna see about getting some sound on here. So I'm gonna look at my function. Sound on is F1. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it is on. I don't know if it's doing a startup sequence or if that's just how it sounds. I think that's just how it sounds, okay. So it's on, I can hear it. Uh, I know there's a lot of background here. I'm in a very hot room and I have AC on and fans on, but it is on. I am going to start going through the... Hi, Rich. Good. So now I'm going to go into, I'm going to go into the engine, or the, sorry, the whistles here. So F2 is whistle short. F3 is whistle long. That is very neat. I love the whistle sounds for these old German locos. I'm gonna do coupling noise, which I'm assuming we'll have to do when I start the engine, so F4. All right, F4 is activated. I'm gonna move it forward. Oh yeah, so I, I heard it there in the background. It was a little bit, um, it wasn't much, but these old European couplers really weren't much. Uh, conductor whistle, F5. Very cool. F6 is shunting range. Don't know what that is. F7 is scoop of coal. There you can hear the firemen scooping coal into the smoke or into the uh, firebox. F8 is air pump. F9 is water pump. I think the air pump's still going, but the water pump just came on. F10 
F10 is station announcement. And that's in German, so if anyone can translate for me, that would be awesome, but I don't know what he said. F11 is sanding. So that's obviously sand going down to the wheels uh, in cases of steep grades or other slippery times when the wheels need a little extra traction. F12 is whistle, so we have another whistle here. That's cool. I don't know. I don't know what the difference is, but here's here's a long whistle again, and then we'll go that back to that whistle. And then F12, just normal whistle. So I guess that one has a little bit more air at the beginning. All right, now if I did this right, this should be the drain. All right, yep, there's the drain. Um, F4 or F14 is mute. F15 is pressure release. F16 is injector. And the last function, F17 is bell. And that is all the functions. Now, what I forgot to tell you earlier is that this is a Plux 16 decoder, a Plux 16 sound decoder. Now, we are going to show off the operation here. We're going to start off with one speed step. You can hear the engine working, and that is one speed step, and it's just crawling along. very smoothly. We're going to bump it up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eight, nine, ten. I'm at 25 right now, so it's a slow moving locomotive, but that's okay. And I will do more of a running video. Um, Probably right now, because that's pretty much going to wrap up our review. We'll put it in reverse. Ah. Cool feature here. When you so when you put it in reverse, the rear headlights, all three of them, turn on also. Let me get back. So that's going to wrap up our review of the BR-50. Uh, this is the first step to our German train, and I'm very happy with it so far. I think we're going to have a great project here, and it's an exciting thing for me, and I hope you guys will stick along for the ride and stay tuned for next week for the next piece. I'm going to leave you with some run-by videos of the BR-50. Have a good day.